Hi, so I am uh, Fabrice Desclos, and uh, here is uh, Camille Mouget. We both work at uh, CEA, uh, in French, uh, Commissariat à l'énergie atomique et aux énergies alternatives. I hope my French, uh, my English not, is not too crappy, and you have to understand CEA and not CIA, because it's two different things. You know, uh, intelligent stuff, and uh, we are nuclear stuff, so uh, different things. So uh, don't be afraid to talk to us after the presentation. Uh, unless you are afraid of nuclear, nuclear stuff. Uh, so we are here um, to present you Myasm, which is a reverse engineering framework uh, written in Python. It is born in uh, two, uh, 2007 and uh, has been uh, published for the first time in 2011. Uh, the code source is uh, open source and is on uh, this uh, GitHub repository. It has as well a Twitter account here and a blog uh, at uh, myasm.re in which uh, you can uh, find some of the demo we will do here but in a more uh, detailed uh, way because we won't have uh, uh, many time to go uh, deep in the details. So uh, why, we are, why are we here? We are here to present you so Myasm because uh, we only uh, present it in the French community. So we are very glad uh, to present you here to the uh, international conference. So thank you, Recon. Um, Myasm is used uh, every day in uh, malware researching, so malware unpacking analysis. It is used uh, as well in uh, vulnerability researches and uh, firmware analysis. And uh, we have uh, some applied researches as well here. Uh, the first version of MIAS was very, very crappy, so we are doing a lot of efforts in order to clean the code base. Oh, I see someone has used the first version of MIAS here. Sorry. Um, and uh, there is a lot of efforts due to do uh, regression stuff and, you, you know, fuzzing and stuff like this. Uh, okay. And uh, today there is no real documentation, but uh, there are uh, documentation in the, in the source code. And uh, there is a lot of examples that uh, allow uh, us to show uh, the usage of uh, the API uh, in Myasm. And uh, keep in mind that all those examples uh, are run during the regression test, so uh, they are always up to date and they are working after each commit uh, here. Uh, so as I said, there is a blog, spot, a blog post. And uh, we are here uh, to show you some uh, features of uh, Myasm. Alors, in, 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 sorry. in Myasm, there are a lot of features, but um, we can show them in a limited time, so we will only concentrate on uh, interesting uh, features here, and we will try to highlight them using a uh, real case example and demonstration we will do here. Uh, in fact, we will do a, a live demonstration to have our shot of adrenaline uh, during the presentation. Okay, so the first uh, example that I want to show you, um, it, the story uh, starts on a friend's <coughs> network. Um, when uh, a guy uh, browsing its favorite uh, lolcat site uh, ends on, the, uh, on this page, which is actually an Angular uh, exploit kit landing page, uh, which detects that the browser is uh, vulnerable, and then um, send uh, this exploit, the MS uh, lead exploit. And uh, we finally hand on T shell code. So the question is, what is T shell, what T shell code is doing? So obviously, the first thing that you will do is disassemble it and look at it. Uh, just to give you a taste of what the Mayasm API uh, looks like, um, here is a tiny disassembler in a few lines. So we start by opening the binary. Uh, actually, using the container API, uh, there is an abstraction of a PE elf extra. Uh, then uh, we instantiate a machine, which is an abstraction uh, and a factory actually for the different architecture, and gives you uh, the API to to do uh, things relative to the different architecture. Then uh, we ask it to uh, instantiate a disassembly engine, disassemble it at the entry point, get the CVG, and as it is a graph, uh, we. Draw, we um, we uh, dump it uh, as a dot file. Uh, this example uh, is uh, in the example this is full if you want to uh, to look at it. Uh, and here you have a 10 line disassembly uh, disassembler uh, which is actually a multi arch architecture for which, uh, each one which is supported by Myasm and uh, that support a PE elf uh, extra. Um, not, Ida, not IDA but 
well. Um, so uh, we disassembled that uh, the, the, the start in uh, XT6 32 bits, and we got this. Actually, trust me, uh, there is a, a weird uh, instruction, so uh, we realized that it's encoded. And what we want to do is to emulate it. I do say emulate it because we don't want to run it on, a, um, on our uh, machine uh, because it's, by definition, uh, untrusted code. So uh, the expected result is this. Um, spoiler alert. Um, I will run the, the shell code and um, uh, find that it's actually a download an exec uh, payload. Uh, uh, yeah. We uh, get its payload from this site and uh, then the create process. So how do we do this? Uh, first, uh, we start with a uh, jitter. Uh, so uh, the jitter is actually uh, the way uh, we emulate code, and uh, uh, here we are using LLVM, but actually we support uh, GCC, TCC, and uh, Pythonic one. Um, uh, in this jitter, uh, the memory is emu emulated and the CPU is emulated. Uh, at first, uh, the memory is completely empty, so we for, uh, we start by map mapping the shell code, um, and then uh, we uh, as the shell code uh, begins with a push pop operation, we need a stack. If we run the shell code with this, we end, um, we end on uh, that, actually in Mayasm crash, uh, but it's, uh, it's normal. It's uh, the try and die uh, approach of, uh, of Mayasm. Indeed, um, there is a kind of slider that you have uh, in the emulation um, from the uh, minimalist one to a full emulation. And the idea, uh, here is the minimalist one, is that uh, the segments are not, are not supported. Uh, there is no DLL, there is no uh, whatever. Uh, so the, the idea is that um, when Myasm will crash, it will put your finger on the inter interesting stuff uh, in the binary. Here, it, this is this uh, code snippet. Uh, which is a, a, a common uh, way to get back um, uh, um, DLL uh, information. So uh, we'll, now, uh, just, we'll use now another API, which is a sandbox, uh, which do um, push the slider a bit further and support segment and uh, we load uh, different DLL extra. To be more realistic, we will load the Internet Explorer binary and add the shell code in the memory. So we do this, we load the different uh, DLLs. Uh, the uh, Windows um, internal structures are also built. So we had the in-memory order uh, list uh, information extra, the PEB, TEB. And just a side note, um, in uh, Myasm, the memory is uh, managed at the byte level. So uh, the, here the TB is completely sparse. And we just, um, we just add the pointer and the information that we know. Uh, so when a malware is doing weird or uncommon stuff, it will, um, it will seek fault. And we it will see that uh, he's actually doing something uh, unusual. <clears throat> so when we run again uh, on our shell code, here uh, the DLL is loaded, the code runs, and it ends on the crash again, try and die approach. And uh, it ends on this error. So this error is what? Actually, when we load the DLL, we parse the export, and we said, OK, if, you, if this, um, if this uh, code wants to call this, uh, this um, API, uh, we break, and we go back to Python, and we can use a Python sub, uh, fun uh, which are just a, a stubbing for function. So how does it work? It's quite simple. Uh, there is just an arbitrary name, which is a convention, the DLL name and then the API name. We get the correct the, um, argument. So here for uh, Strulan, it's just the source. We then retrieve the string in Python. Um, here, uh, actually, as it is uh, Python strings, we can use uh, the len of Python to calculate the name. And we get back the, to, we set the return value, the length, and the address. And that's it. Um, actually, the function stub can um, interact with the whole uh, Myasm emulation. So for instance, this is a malloc. We just add a new uh, memory page. And what, why we are uh, doing it, this? It's because we can implement minimalist API. So for instance, the uh, URL download to cache file, um, we just take the URL and say, OK, it works, no problem. And um, the 
the output is in the file named uh, Toto because of the function. So, uh, demonstration. Uh, I launch it on this. The shell code, the code is running, and here what we can see is that actually, I don't know if you can see here, uh, there is several uh, API that are being called, and you can see here the URL download to cache file on this URL, then a create process, and as we said to the, to the malware that's uh, actually the create process file, it tries another trick, which is to call a, a shell execute, and we also said that it fails, so it tries the next uh, URL, and then uh, we can uh, see the um, every uh, URL, that, uh, every CNC that uh, it brings with him. So there are uh, a lot of uh, AB in uh, Miasm uh, that are already implemented, so cloud process, malloc, etc. So we are recording uh, completely Windows in Python, actually. Um, uh, now you say, okay, uh, what, what doing all of this stuff, I, it takes uh, maybe um, a bit more time than doing it with a debugger. Uh, but uh, actually, this is a campaign, so when we got this second shell code, which is exactly the, the same but with different, different CNC, we just, we just reuse the same script, and then we get back the new, uh, the new URL and, um, uh, and the CNC. So the second demo is uh, about the, the analysis of uh, binary of uh, equation drug, which is called uh, NTEVTX64.6. Uh, this binary is not packed, but it protects its uh, strings, uh, important strings in the binary. Uh, they are ciphered, in fact. And uh, each time the binary needs one of these strings, it uh, calls a decrypting function with uh, three arguments. The first one is a pointer to the encrypted string, the second one is the length of the string, and the third one is a destination buffer. And uh, when we are facing this such a binary, we want to automatically uh, retrieve all the strings, uh, decrypt the string in the binary. So uh, there are two things to do. The first one is to retrieve uh, for each reference of the, the call on the decryption function those parameters. And the second thing to do is to, for example, emulate the, the function with uh, those arguments. So uh, to do this, we have uh, an algorithm we will um, explain later, which is uh, called uh, the dependency graph. So here is the function uh, which is responsible of the string de de decryption. And uh, here is a function that uses. So there are three uh, registers as the argument. And we want to track uh, R8 and RDX, which stores the pointer to the, um, the source string, uh, encrypted string, and the length. So obviously, RDX is easy to recover. It's uh, directly here. But uh, R8 is a bit tricky. So here we see that uh, if we do a hand analysis, it depends on uh, this register and the offset uh, 23. So we have to track back uh, this register to see uh, which is uh, its initial value. And here we see that uh, uh, in this code, it is uh, kind of uh, set it to the value FFF, so minus one. Uh, so uh, here is the demonstration of the dependency graph. It, is, uh, it has been uh, coded as a plugin uh, on IDA. So you said uh, you need to track uh, R8 uh, here, and here uh, the plugin will enlight all the lines which are implied in the computation of the register you have selected. So you have the, the first line here, and it highlights uh, the initial lines, and we will explain later, but there is also a symbolic emulation, and in this case, we have resolved the value, and it says this value is 22, because 23 minus 1 is 22. Okay? So, um, in, uh, in, this in this binary, as there are 82 references, it's a bit hard to do it by hand, so that's why we use this kind of algorithm. Uh, this algorithm is a static analysis. It, uh, it allows you to do uh, backtracking of uh, some uh, variables. And uh, it's between the past sensitive algorithm and the use test chains. The first one, past sensitive, is an algorithm that tra backtrack uh, variables. But uh, it will uh, do an exhaustive research in every um, pass uh, execution. So, for example, if you have a loop which uh, executes uh, 1,000 times, it will do uh, the research during 1,000 uh, times uh, for the same as the block. So it's a bit painful. And uh, the use dev chains gives uh, one full solution for a function uh, independent, which uh, will be independent of uh, every pass. So uh, it's a bit hard to, um, 
to use its results. So the, the algorithm is a bit um, uh, tricky to explain and uh, it will be a hard time for me. But um, to simplify, it will uh, track uh, the variable in a block, if, in a basic block, if this basic block creates a new dependence of the variables we are currently tracking. Okay? If you want more uh, explanations, you have a, a paper here. Oh, sorry, it's, it's in French. And uh, a blog, and uh, in this one, it's uh, in, in English. Uh, so, uh, thanks to this algorithm, we uh, can uh, distinguish, uh, for example, uh, cases like uh, even else. And uh, if we have a complex loop, it will uh, unroll the minimum uh, amount of time the loop in order to uh, discover all the new uh, dependencies and give uh, the solutions. Uh, okay, so uh, what's next? In the next demonstration, we will use first this algorithm on all the references of the decryption function. And then we will emulate uh, the decryption function with those arguments. And so we will retrieve all the decrypted strings. Uh, for the moment, th the only problem is that uh, the, the jitter part of Miasm is a uh, native code, so uh, it's in 64-bit. Uh, and uh, as you know, uh, IDA is in 32-bit. Uh, but maybe uh, in the near future, we will be able to run a full plugin uh, in IDA. Uh, OK. So uh, here is the demonstration. Let's flow the adrenaline. Not happening. We run the plugin in IDA in order to do uh, RPC uh, calls uh, from the out of IDA, uh, the exterior of IDA. So here you see that we have uh, resolved uh, each uh, references here. And uh, we inject it to the emulator, and so we have uh, the um, deciphered string here, and so on. And the plugin um, gives back the information through uh, RPC on IDA. So you have, uh, alors, ah, it's a little too, I don't know if you can do it, but you have uh, for each call uh, the uh, unciphered string. Select one, and uh, we have the deciphered string here. Voila. So actually, uh, in these binaries, there is also a custom cryptography. Uh, in fact, um, there are used uh, it for, uh, for instance, uh, big numbers manipulation. And our goal is that once we reverse once, uh, we want to identify it everywhere, uh, including on different architectures, because the, these samples um, are, in fact, in uh, 86 bits and uh, uh, 32 bits and uh, 64 bits. So um, actually the goal is to uh, have a, having a tool that is able to say in this binary framework, uh, uh, whatever, the function at 1, 2, 3, 4 is a mem copy or a, a big, num uh, big number uh, copy. Uh, so um, as you, you see uh, today, uh, there is a state of art uh, in these, um, in these uh, fields, but um, um, the Sibyl approach, which is, uh, which is a side project based on Amazon, is, um, is kind of uh, different because, in fact, uh, when uh, you got uh, most of the approach are based on signatures. Um, so, for instance, uh, uh, the CFG or the instructions that are used. But uh, when uh, you uh, faced obfuscated, um, for instance, uh, here is an obfuscated mem copy, uh, your signature that you that you made on uh, the naive one uh, is not available anymore. Uh, and uh, uh, moreover, if the mem copy is vectorized, uh, here the instructions uh, are different and the CFG. So the idea is to consider the function as a black box and do what, uh, what you do when you have a debugger. You choose your input and you launch the function and you see the result. You observe the result and you compare with what you expect. So here, specifically, the inputs are the arguments and the initial memory. The outputs are the output value and the final memory. And we run all of this in a minimalist environment, the sandbox that you see just before, uh, in which there is just the binary which is mapped and the stack. So just to be sure, uh, here are an example of a few test sets. We have this black box function, and our first test is mule. So the inputs of MUL are uh, 5 and 10, and we 
we said the arguments run the function and the function crash. So obviously it is not a mule. Then we pass to the next test, uh, which is a uh, strolan. Uh, so we mapped uh, read-only strings, uh, hello, run the function, the function terminates with the output value zero. We compare it to the, uh, the expected one, which is five. This is not the same, so obviously this is not a strolan. And the final, it's eight well. Uh, so the input is one, two, three, four, we, and we run the function, we got one, two, three, four in, uh, in int, at, as output, this is the expected one, so it is, is likely uh, it well. Um, if we go back uh, to the mule, um, obviously it well has to dereference uh, the pointer, its first argument. So with the mule, it differs five, so it crash. And this is why it crashed before. So we have to have a tool that is resilient to crash, and the opposite problem which is an uh, infinite loop when uh, a function um, waits, um, expect uh, a counter and that you give it uh, a pointer, it will uh, loop uh, uh, a very, uh, to, to loop um, a very big number of time. So we, j we just want to stop the execution. We want the test to be uh, described uh, uh, as a, a, in an agnostic architecture way, an ABI, agnostic way. And maybe one call cannot be enough. So for instance, if you uh, use a two and two and you get four, you don't know if it is a add, a mule, a po. So um, you, ha you have to have a test politic in which you can say um, uh, test one, uh, and if the test one uh, success, launch the second test. And of course, this is embarrassingly parallel, etc. So we build a tool for it, which is named Civil, uh, which is open source. Uh, it has a CLI and an IDA plugin. Uh, it has documentation. It's based on Miasm for the um, digitor, uh, the parsing of a PE elf, and, and several other things. And it can be um, speed up uh, using a QEMU. Actually, we are using a Unicorn, but a Unicorn is actually QEMU. And uh, it can learn a new function automatically, but this is out of the, the scope of um, today. So uh, back to our case, we want to recognize uh, BN copy, the, so big name copy. So we just have to create a class, uh, which, is, which stands for the test. Then we prepare the test, that is to say we allocate two big names, uh, with one being read only the source, and a second one being write, write only uh, the, the output. Then we set the argument in an ABI uh, agnostic way. We run the function, and if the function success, we check the output, and the output is the, the destination is equal to the, the, the source. Uh, the, the test politic is naive, we just have one test. So in uh, just a few lines, uh, you got a, a test uh, that, you, that have been uh, written in uh, just a few minutes, and this test will um, will run on um, every uh, supported architecture uh, by, C, uh, by uh, Myasm and every supported ABI. So, demonstration time. So, uh, the first demo that I want to show you is running Sibyl uh, on a uh, BuzzyBox uh, MIPS uh, because uh, this is uh, the kind of uh, the things that you uh, always find, uh, find on a uh, on a firmware, for instance. So, for instance, it, it found a uh, memcomp. So, we'll see what it does found. And I don't see if you see it. But, well, I think that you don't, have, don't want to reverse this function in addition that you have uh, crappy things that, uh, uh, like uh, the delay slot and these things. But if we use the naive um, jump uh, when there is no optimization, we can see here that it does look like a memcomp. Second example is this one. Uh, here again, you don't want to reverse it. Uh, in addition, that he is using uh, SSC3 uh, uh, instruction. Um, so we can ask Sibyl what he does things. And Sibyl say, okay, it does look like a memmove. And you can note that it is not he is not saying he is looking like a mem copy because actually is there is a test we, which tells that there is the difference between a mem copy and mem move, which is the overlapping uh, uh, gap when uh, you right. okay. And um, to check these results, uh, if we look at the XREF 
In fact, uh, this function uh, is, is being registered as a main move in SSU3. So actually, it does found the, the good one. And finally, if we run it on our um, uh, equation um, test. So the first one, here I'm running it on the 32 bits um, binary, and it found uh, all of this. So uh, um, big number comp, big number shift, uh, div, uh, etc. And if I run the same test on uh, the x64 uh, version, uh, you can see that just a bit slower, but he is able to find um, the same function at the different offsets. Um, so this is very useful when you analyze a binary or a firmware. And uh, often in a firmware you have uh, all the stuff, uh, Strulens, Tokopi, etc. So you have the base, uh, all basis functions that are named by, by CB. Um, okay, so uh, now the, we talk about emulation. Uh, there is another part of Myism that we want to introduce to you, which is related to the um, IR, the intermediate representation and uh, symbolic execution, etc. So to give you just a glance of what, what it does look like, uh, here is a simple function. Um, actually, it is obfuscated, but well. Um, you can ask uh, to Myism to translate it to its internal uh, IR. You got this, so I just make them side by side. Okay, so here we go. And what you can see here is, for instance, Actually, the IR is quite intuitive. So there is just a few words in this uh, IR, and we have it since now uh, 10 years, and it is it has not been changed uh, uh, since. So uh, and we have we've been able to handle several architecture and all of the algorithms that uh, we have shared to you. So we are quite um, happy with this kind this and IR and we think that it will not change in in the in, in the more, next moreover years. the jitter of miasm is based on this IR so uh, when you are jitting some code the native code is translated to this code and this code is compiled to C and so we can emulate uh, this is the mechanism to emulate uh, code on miasm and this is how we are actually sure that the semantic is quite correct. Uh, so for instance, if I look like, uh, I look at a, a more complicated uh, instruction, uh, the push, uh, it has two side effects, um, this one and this one, and in fact, they are done in parallel, that is to say, uh, the ESP here and uh, is not the same that this one, this is kind of uh, the out and the in, uh, like a transfer function, okay? So for instance, uh, exchange between EAX and EBAX is just uh, two lines, EAX equal EBAX and EBAX equal EAX. It's, 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 this is a bit tricky the first time you see it because when you read that you see, oh, there is an error in the semantic, but uh, uh, they are done in parallel, so. Um, so if I take a more complex instruction, for instance, sub, you can see that there is all of, all of this um, side effect, and uh, actually it's just the, the flags computation uh, with, uh, you can see here, the ternary operator, which is the same that in, in, uh, in C for the zero flag. The negative flag is actually taking the bit from 31 to 32, so the most significant bit. And uh, the parity flag is compute with, uh, with an arbitrary operation that we named parity, uh, which stands for uh, the um, uh, population count in uh, x86. But, well, um, there is a lot of uh, verbosity here, so we can do um, a compilation tricks, uh, like um, uh, um, dead regs and extra, um, simplica common simplification. So, if I do this, I got this graph. And now it's, it's quite simple to understand, okay? You can see that there is a, a lot of computation on EIX. But, well, we can do better. Actually, when you see this, the thing that you want to do is to do your math and to take uh, the EIX here and uh, add, um, add the different constants. Uh, so we have a big equation and you want to propagate constants to, cr uh, to crush it. 
And actually, this is just a simplification, okay? Uh, when I have uh, uh, one plus two, I simplify it to three, okay? Uh, another simplification is uh, uh, x xor x is just zero, or x sub x um, minus x is uh, zero again. So this is, in fact, um, symbolic execution. So what does it done on this uh, sample? If I select all of this and ask to emulate it, I got this. And here what I have, the final EIP is actually the top stack. Okay, there is a memory access of 32 bits in, uh, on the, the stack, which is the written address, obviously. And you can see that the AX has been, have been simplified, and this is just uh, the first argument plus the second plus lit. Okay. Um, if I take a second example here, and I run my symbolic execution, I can hand on something um, demo effect. It's coming. Okay. This. Uh, yes, this. Okay. Um, so if I run the symbolic execution here, what I got is that uh, the equation of x is quite complicated. Okay. The second line. And in fact, uh, there is just a simplification which is missing. If we look at the, the equation, is in, we can see easily a pattern. And in fact, uh, we have a x and a not c, uh, or a not x and c, which is repeated. And this is, uh, if you do your math, this is just uh, xor between x and, and, and c. So the whole equation actually here is just xor between two arguments. So uh, you, we can say to Maison to add this simplification is uh, just um, as easy as um, uh, adding a new simplification. The strategy here is that we will match using a, a regexp in a inter intermediate representation uh, to match uh, x1 and x2 or x3 and x4 uh, because uh, the constant can be pre-computed so you, we will not see the not uh, the constant and not the constants. We have to, to match it and then check that there are been um, uh, that are actually uh, not the, the one of the others. And then we replace it with the, the correct, um, with the simplified uh, equation. And then we'll do this for one, but we, we see earlier that there is, uh, there are um, two, um, two of this, and the simplification will just propagate and we end with the correct one. So the code uh, related to that is just, uh, as I said before, uh, the IR uh, regexp, uh, which is here, then we check that they are equal to the nodes, and we replace with the correct one. We enable the bases, and what we get, what we finally obtain, is that when I run with this implication which is enabled, I finally have the AX, which is just the first argument, XOR, the second one. Okay. Thank you, Camille. Uh, the next demonstration is about analyzing uh, this Vertu machine. Uh, in uh, a version of uh, this, there was um, a function that is responsible of deciphering the CC URLs, which is um, uh, compiled in a custom CPU. And um, so, in reality, to have the URLs, you can run the code and emulate the code and get back the URLs on x86. But if you want to analyze the code under the virtual machine, um, you have to reverse it. So um, in this demonstration, we um, will show you how we um, do the main, a lot of automatic analysis in order to do minimal uh, and uh, analysis. So the first thing to do is uh, once you have found the fetch of uh, mnemonics, we will uh, do a symbolic execution of each mnemonic uh, to see uh, what are the, um, the side effects of those mnemonics. So the first one, for example, we have uh, two equations here. So for the moment, they are kind of complicated. And you have to know that uh, the memory at ECX is a virtual machine program counter. So when you inject this information in this equation, you have the, this equation that gives back, in fact, that it is the update of the virtual machine program counter here. 
And you can deduce that the first instruction is uh, one byte long because uh, it, adds, uh, it adds one. The second one is uh, more complicated. Uh, here we have uh, the virtual machine program counter, and we can see that the byte at the virtual machine program counter plus one is updated using uh, XOR with strange const constants and, uh, and the current uh, bytecode of the, of the current mnemonic. So here, when you have uh, done the um, uh, symbolic execution, you may have some uh, expression like that. And, we will, and the, um, the idea here is to apply reduction rules to automatically get the high level of uh, semantic of the instruction. So to have that, those um, reduction rules, you have to do manual analysis. So you have, to do, you have to know that, for example, ECX is a pointer to the VM structures which stores all the registers of the, the virtual machines. So here we have um, less than 10 reduction rules. This one is, uh, for example, ECX is a pointer to the VM struct. So the deref of uh, VM struct will give the virtual machine program counter. And something like the deref of the VM structure plus, plus an integer is the, reg the register X. We don't know the number of the register and so on. The, uh, an integer will be reduced as a generic integer. And something like this, so a lookup at virtual machine program counter plus an int will give an int because it's obviously a lookup of the immediate part of the instruction, which can be used for the offset of the, for the register number, for example. And uh, the last one is uh, that we have any operation between two integers will, re will be reduced as an integer. So if we go back to the uh, final equation give, uh, given by the uh, symbolic execution, we will do a uh, death first uh, algorithm in order to apply uh, reduction rules. So we can apply first on those leaves ECX, and we will apply it, and it will give that uh, ECX becomes the VM structures pointer. So we will replace all the, um, those leaves with, which are integers by the generic integer token here. So now we can see that here we have a reduction rule as well in red. And this one is a reduction in order which will give the register X. Uh, we don't know for the moment the which exactly is the number of the, the register number. Here in red, we have a lookup of the VMPC uh, register. So we have another lookup here which will result in uh, the fetch of the immediate uh, part of the instruction. So it's results, it is reduced excuse me, as an integer. And here we have an operation between two integers. So this is an integer. And we end with this expression. And there is no more uh, reduction rules that can apply. So we stop here. And here we have uh, a simple addition between a register of the virtual machine and an integer. OK. Uh, those reduction rules uh, can be seen as uh, reduction rules like, you know, uh, in, in Lex and Yak uh, stuff. So when we execute, uh, when we do assembly execution on each, on every uh, mnemonics and we apply those reduction rules, we got, uh, we have, uh, we, we obtain the, um, uh, those equations and it's a bit simpler to see this to see the, uh, which uh, mnemonic uh, correspond to uh, which uh, semantic. So here, for example, we have a simple XOR between a register and an integer, and we have the update of the virtual machine program counter. In this one, we have a, uh, a write to the memory, which will, in fact, is a XOR with a simple integer, and we have uh, an update of this register. So, in fact, this instruction is a kind of, you know, addition in memory with a post-incremental uh, a pointer, like for example uh, on ARM uh, arch architectures, and this one is the same one but in uh, 16 bit. But we can do m more than this. So um, for the moment, we only uh, reverse some structure of the VM and uh, we let Mayasm re return us the intermediate language of every mnemonics. And now we will, but we, will, we want the native code of the original uh, binary. So uh, what we will going to do is to apply those equations and to instantiate them using the bytecode of the, the VM so we can resolve the reg X and uh, look up the, its register number. And so we have automatically the disassembling of the uh, virtual machine without writing any disassemble code here. 
but we can do better. Um, so actually, um, what we got uh, looks like uh, something like this. And this is the full disassembly of uh, the DVM. So I, I do know that you can see a lot of things, but uh, here we have the we have not just the trace. Okay, we have the the full um, oh. uh, uh, control flow. Um, if you zoom a bit, you can see that uh, even this uh, code is obfuscated. See the, the addition here. So it's still an obfuscated. Um, okay. So and so actually, uh, this is uh, my IR, but we can do more more than that. Um, in fact, what we can do is translate this to LLVM IR, which leads something like this. And then we can compile it uh, to uh, x86 uh, 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 again and to obtain uh, the code, uh, a code which looks like this. So uh, the demo is quite easy to do. I launch it. OK, it, it translates to uh, LLVM IR. Then, um, then I obtain something which looks like like this. Come on. Uh, this is uh, complete with uh, optimization options. So the obfuscation that we just see is actually reduced. And we finally end with uh, this, uh, this tiny code, which is much simpler to understand. And you can act, uh, also see that uh, there is custom operation. Uh, there are calls to RC4 uh, that we detect in the, in the uh, mnemonic analysis. In fact, there are very uh, quite complex mnemonic in the virtual machine, for example. One mnemonic is a full decryption with its key embedded in the uh, mnemonic encoding. So you have mnemonic uh, of about uh, 20 bytes or 50 bytes long. And that uh, we can do more than that. Uh, in fact, what we can do is re-inject this code in the original uh, sample. And uh, if we do so, we obtain um, a quicker uh, malware sample. So we optimize the uh, malware. And when we run it, actually, we instrumented uh, the RC4, so we can see that there is uh, some calls. And we dump at the end uh, the, the area that have been deciphered. Uh, we, we see that this is kind of configuration, and the, ro the, the code works well, and we end with the, the CNC, um, CNC output. Um, so um, another thing that <laughs> we want to show you uh, <laughs> It's, if you re remember the first shellcode that uh, we um, analyzed, uh, you have seen that obviously the shellcode is kind of packed uh, to be alphanumeric. Okay, we can see here the URL. So the idea is that we can that actually this is a campaign which is associated with the uh, Angular exploit kit, but can we steal the packer from this shellcode, and can we do it in an automatically way? Automatic way without actually reversing the associate stub of the, the stub of the packer, and moreover, can we make our own download exec payload with a recon uh, URL? And the response is yes. So, how we do this? We use uh, which is called um, the dynamic symbolic execution or concolic execution. This is not something we invent. Um, the, the principle is quite easy. Actually, there is just a symbolic execution which runs alongside a concrete one, okay? And the concrete one helps the symbolic execution to deal with uh, loops and the external API. So for instance, if I take this uh, small code snippet, uh, error, there is just um, a branch on X, which is unknown, but during the concrete execution, of course, uh, X is set to uh, a constant. So for instance, it, it entered the if. If we do a symbolic only execution, the, the execution execution will uh, get stuck on the if because he don't know if he if he have or not to take the branch. But uh, using the DSE, uh, in fact, it will the concrete execution will tell it that he take he does take the branch, and and then uh, the symbolic uh, will say, okay, I take the branch, so I do know that X is is uh, odd, and I continue in the branch, in symbolic, okay. If we apply this to our shellcode, the idea is that I will so just init the DAC engine. We attach to our jitter that we see before. We, for the moment, concretize all of the symbols 
uh, in the uh, symbolic execution, so R is concrete. And then we symbolize the memory which corresponds to the shellcode bytes. So the, so the P, uh, Y, E, E, I, 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 I that you see before is no symbolic, but the stack, etc., are um, completely concrete. And we add the breakpoints at the original entry point. We then, then if we run and break on the original entry point, what we can do, for instance, it dumps the, it to dump the equation of uh, the resulting uh, memory bytes. So if we do this uh, on uh, TIS1, what we can see is that it's actually a, a, a stub uh, which is uh, pretty simple. Is it, it does uh, store two memory area, and one of them is, um, is, uh, is in mirrored before. So the whole idea is the plan is to force the final memory to contain our uh, URL, then to force the initial shellcode to be alphanumeric, okay? And we'll ask a solver, so here it is uh, Z3, to rebuild the new shellcode, assuming the different pass constraints which are enforced by the uh, packers and the final memory equation that we get. And this way we can steal the shellcode. So, demo. So the code is quite simple, okay? So it's just a few lines. If I launch it. So the first thing, the first, first thing that it is doing is to um, instrument the code until it reach the uh, original entry point. It take, it should work, come on. And once it will reach the original entry point, it will modelize uh, the equation, ask the solver, and then uh, get a solution, which is here, okay? And if I look at this one, you can see that it does look like what we have before. But you don't have to trust me. If I kn now if I run the, the previous script that we wrote in the first section on this new shellcode, what we got is that the script is now uh, the, this payload is now uh, downloading from a recon.cx slash payload and uh, create a process from it. Okay, the last demo is to show um, another engine uh, in Miasm. The first one we showed that, um, was uh, the symbolic execution and there is a second one and, um, which is a minimalistic. It's an engine in which we will uh, propagate uh, uh, C types, so um, we are using, uh, to, propagate, to do type propagation, we need two things, we need uh, structures and types, and uh, so you can have them if you, for, for example, reverse a binary, an uh, EFI binary, because uh, structures are open, or if you have already reversed a binary and you have recovered uh, its structure, or for example, you have a, a V table recovered by uh, some, uh, some tools, and the second input needed is uh, the packing uh, of the structure. For example, if the structure is packed or, or aligned um, on uh, x86 or 64 bit. And uh, when you give this to uh, this engine in Miasma, uh, Miasm can uh, answer simple questions. For example, if you say that uh, Rx is, um, um, type is uh, struct foo, uh, you can ask Miasm what is the type of Rx plus 8? So it will obviously uh, give here a char, uh, star. And uh, if you ask uh, the type of this equation here, it will answer this type. So now that we have uh, this um, basic block, uh, basic stuff, sorry, we can uh, inject it in uh, the, um, an engine that will do a fixed point research and um, so propagate type in, uh, in a binary. Uh, I won't explain the, the algorithm because uh, I think we don't uh, have uh, many time. So here is the demonstration. <laughs> so here we have a binary um, which is a, a model um, EFI of uh, this computer, I think. So we know that uh, the second argument here is a EFI assistant table star. And uh, we get uh, um, a file, a C header file, which is named BMOS, which is a Preprocessed uh, header file which contains every structures of the EFI. Um, we didn't write any uh, C parser. We use uh, a tool called uh, PC parser, which is a Python module. So we give first the, this uh, uh, wait, this uh, this C header, 
And we give as well the fact that it's for uh, AMD64, so now Miasm con knows the packing of those structures. And we will give as well the hint that uh, EDX is uh, of type uh, EFE system table star. And now we will run this on the entry, uh, main entry of the, of the program. And here it will uh, auto comment that, uh, okay, this one I give him so he knows that RDX obviously is a EFE system table star. So he knows that RBX is as the same type, but here he knows that at this point he knows that this Memory, um, key, um, memory is of type EFE boot service star. So RRX is of the same type. And here, the call, it is resolved. And we can see that this is resolved to a function pointer that is called EFE great event, which has <laughs> uh, those arguments. And so on here for the, uh, for the other calls. Um, with this plugin, you can as, as well uh, give, um, you know, in EFE, often the binary uh, gets the EFE stand table and store it in a global variable, so it will have it for uh, the whole binary. So this is another example in which we will uh, run again the, the, the plugin with uh, those information. We reverse it and we know that those uh, globals um, and we know that types. So we run it on a bigger function here. And uh, we can see now that here, we have a call to the function which is, which is which type is EFE input read key, and we see next that we have a variable which uh, compared against uh, y and uh, y, so we can see that uh, it may match uh, the the code here. Um, okay, it is, uh, this is an example of type propagation, but uh, there is other domains that we are working on. Uh, so, uh, for instance, um, intervals of value and, um, and uh, tainting. Um, but we do, don't uh, do for, for now uh, automatic type recovery or uh, backward propagation that we are uh, still working on. Uh, so to sum up, uh, we covered uh, several samples uh, from sandboxing uh, to, uh, of malware to uh, IR and symbolic execution. Uh, I hope uh, that uh, at least one of the samples uh, talked to you and that uh, the next time you, you will consider using uh, Myism for your problems, uh, for fun and profit. Um, and unfortunately, we didn't have time to talk about uh, how it works under the hood. But uh, the support is free as in a free beer. So don't hesitate to, to come to us, uh, especially with the beer. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this talk, and uh, thank you. I don't know if we have time for questions. Or... Hey, I was just wondering what architectures you support. Uh, okay, it was on the on the first slide, but we oh. just uh, go very quick on it. Okay. Currently, it's x86, 32, and 64-bit. It's uh, ARM, ARM sub. We are we don't support every ARM sub two instruction at the semantic okay. level. We have uh, MSP uh, 430 uh, for the you know the micro corruption challenge. R0. And uh, and uh, we and uh, sixty-four bit yep. and uh, SH four and there is a power PC that is on on its way in current uh, yeah. Thank, Thank you. you again.